Our initial worry was, will I ever get my child back? You know, we had the luxury of having our kids. They weren't born autistic. Some kids are. You know, they regressed around 15 to 18 months. They, they were speaking, they were uh, normal children, and things that they already had learned were being unlearned. Because you, you think, are they going to have a normal life? Will they ever go to a normal school? You know, I love the school that we're in, but it's strictly for autism. And will they ever interact with mainstream, you know, neurotypical children? Or are they going to be able to be brought into a normal society or find a job or things that normal people do? Are they going to be able to take care of themselves? You know, that was definitely my biggest worry when I first found out that they had autism. I'm not going to be somber about this, you know. But my, it just shows you that they are looking at the world in a completely different way than we are. So we can't live like this and try to teach them to live like us. It has to be the opposite, and that's the only way you're gonna make it through, through, through the day. Because since they're not as verbal as a typical child would be, it's harder for me to communicate with them, but the love is still there, it's all the same. So we're very happy in the last few months, we're fortunate that they've made, it, they've, they've made that breakthrough where um, they're, they're speaking. I remember when, when Candy when, was being uh, interviewed for this and she was telling her story of, of Brendan saying, I love you. And, I mean, the, the, it doesn't get any better. How are you, how are you, hello? People definitely just have complete misconceptions about what autism really is. They're loving, caring, and they just have their different way of showing it. That's all it is. Thank God, you know, lots of work, lots of prayer, you know, our kids are back. Nate was born August 8th, 2005, a uh, normal, healthy baby boy. Big boy when he was born, um, lots of energy. Growing and doing things at normal speeds, um, saying mom, ball, Daniel, daddy at one. And, and then something happened right around two. Just not totally focused all the time. He was walking on his toes, wasn't answering to his name, wasn't giving us eye contact, lost pretty much verbal communication. Some drooling out of the mouth, uh, like staring off into space, you know. And then in April, my dad came down. My dad works with uh, disabled children in Colorado on the ski slopes, and he took one look at Nate and he said I needed to have him diagnosed and my dad was right. So that's when we had him diagnosed on April 17th, 2008, when our world came crashing down. Have hope, because if you don't have any hope, then you're just going to feel bad all your life. I don't think there's one single moment, I just think every moment that I have I'm proud of him. I mean, he's a tough little cookie for what he has to go through. So many of our hopes are actually coming true already. Bob and Suzanne Wright have done such an incredible job. We have a family services and we've given away millions of dollars in grants all around the country to help families cope with, with autism. This year was the first year I got to step back, not only as a parent, but as a committee member of Autism Speaks, and see how many people really support us. People are actually taking notice. You know, I wear this puzzle piece proudly on my wrist, this tattoo, and the first year or two, you know, there was a, why do you have a puzzle piece? I don't get that question anymore, because it's out there. Autism Speaks is everywhere. And then you can always come back to us and we continue to help in any way we can. It's, a, it's across the entire country. As much as research is important, awareness is probably more important because the more aware everybody is, the easier it's going to be to cope in the future. And that's why we started Autism Speaks. Bob and I could have taken care of Christian, but who's going to take care of all these kids? So as a country, we have to take care of it. And these are millions of families affected. It gave me an avenue to find out other ways for me to get help for my family and for my child. If it wasn't for them, I don't know where I would be. Whatever I can do to help, I help because you know what? When we got autism, we were so alone. We had nowhere to go. 
It was unbelievable that these parents were suffering in silence with no voice and no authority. Now we have it, Autism Speaks, and really the country and the world is listening.